everyone has that one ship in their hangar that just makes you smile. As for me, well, this is mine. Here it is, the Sabre, Aegis Dynamics' premier stealth fighter. The Sabre sits in that tricky middle ground of medium fighter. It should be more powerful than a light fighter, but lack the guts to be called a heavy fighter. But is that the case here? Over the course of this video, I will run you through the best equipment setup, my thoughts from using this ship, and give you a guide to making the highest AUEC with the Sabre. Because I think you'll be surprised how much the ship can make. And if you enjoy what you see, a sub and sharing this video would go very far for a small channel like mine. The Sabre comes with some challenging connotations. Most people will immediately chuckle about how the Gladys is more maneuverable, or the Vanguard series offers more DPS, and both of those claims are correct, but something just feels right with this ship. Seeing those four size threes fire from right next to you pumps adrenaline like no other ship can do. Having your missiles within a bay truly sells the stealth look of this ship, while also adding the secrecy. Did I fire my last shot? Let's find out. There is something to be said about Aegis styling. Inside and out this ship looks the parts. You know it's built for stealth operations even from a glance, the interior fits the purpose perfectly. While it may not be much to look at, the dimmed red underglow tone and great visibility make this one of the better cockpits out there. And styling doesn't just stop there at visuals, the Sabre's afterburn is off the perfect symphony to tie this package together. But, if I'm going to nitpick, Aegis hasn't heard of cable management. I don't know, maybe this is just on purpose to scare away Origin pilots, or maybe it's a cost cutting measure, but at just shy of 2.2 million AUEC, details like this count. I mean, that's Vanguard money for a ship with a ladder and a seat. Kitting out the Sabre like most ships offers two options, laser repeaters or laser cannons. Personally, I find laser repeaters feel better to use, the main difference being repeaters offer lower alpha damage per shot, but higher shots in a capacitor. As your turn rate isn't great, the repeaters allow you to quickly unload before boosting away if you are in danger. As standard, the Sabre comes equipped with four CF337 Panther repeaters. These are already some of the best repeaters you can get in 316. If you want the ideal setup, I'd recommend Attrition Freeze, which offer a quicker reboot time after distortion shutdown. The Sabre is all about stealth, so we will continue this trend with two Mirage shields. These offer the same protection as other size 1 shields, but also have the lowest heat output. An honourable mention goes to the FR-66, while they run much hotter, they do offer greater module HP. When it comes to power supplies, I go for two slipstreams. This size 1 stealth power plant offers more than enough power to meet our needs, but also helps reduce our heat output. So if you've been paying attention this far, the logic behind these callers will not shock you. Snowblinds have the slowest cooling rate of all grade A components, but this is still more than enough for what we need to keep this stealth build cool. Finally, Quantum Drive. This is the only component that isn't stealth. The biggest goal is being able to jump from one side of Stanton to the other. For this reason, the Atlas Drive is perfect for our needs. While this is not the fastest, we can get around the whole system on one fuel tank. The Sabre is kitted out, you've watched the wings unfold many times, and most likely seen the ship spawn floating in the air. It's time to make some money. Box missions offer a great balance between- no, no, I'm, I'm only joking. Bounty hunting around Crusader is the place to be. I'd recommend setting your spawn to Grim Hex, reducing downtime. The ideal combat loot is group VHRTs, then wait for this mission to respawn. In the meantime, do as many single VHRTs as you can, typically it's 2-3. to three. Finally, repeat this cycle until you've made enough money. With a 15% bonus from both Northrop Group and Crusader Security, 
I average 627,000 AUEC per hour. Now whatever you do, don't forget to take call to arms under the mercenary tab. And just a word of warning, your wings fall off at the slightest gust of wind, taking your weapon with you, so fly safe out there. Looking into the future, I see bright things. Its compact design will make it ideal patrol ship for an Idris fleet. At 4 meters longer than a Gladius and almost identical in width when landed, it will be a great alternative when more firepower and fuel is needed. When stealth plays more of an impact, the flat 10% IR bonus that comes with the Sabre will better allow you to jump on unsuspecting targets while evading IR and EM missiles better than most other ships. So with all this being said, who is the Sabre for? Let's get one thing out of the way. This is not the next best PvP ship. When the Sabre first released it had three size 1 shields, this has since been reduced by one, making it equal to the Gladius. You also share the same maximum missile payload, unless you want two size 4 missiles, in which case you have less. A light fighter will outturn you, and while your burst DPS is 500 more than the Gladius, a good pilot will be pinned on your tail, eating through the extra hull HP. So if you think the Sabre is your next Dominator single seat PvP fighter, I'd recommend you park that idea and continue to follow the Gladius meta. With this being said, a good pilot will make the difference. During recent Jump Town events, I ran the Sabre every time, and to be frank, it was great. The vast majority of players simply haven't practiced enough to compete. Like many skill-based games, it's not the tool that makes you good, it's the ability you have to wield it. And yes, the minute a coordinated group of skilled light fighters arrived, this ship fell apart. But PvP is only half the story. For PvE, the ship is superb. As shown, you can break even with the Sabrin under 4 hours of grinding. Your turn rate can be supplemented with some hearty boosting and proper power management. And with the introduction of atmospheric bounties, the Sabre is a real treat to fly in atmosphere. The medium fighter has the perfect weight to really sell the experience of flying. Something I didn't plan for in writing this was the cult following of diehard Sabre enthusiasts, almost ashamed to admit their love until someone made the first move. Within minutes of gameplay, an org member will reminisce of the good old days and when it could take a beating and dish one out. In flying the ship, you are openly endorsing the rule of cool and throwing caution to the wind. You don't care for shortcomings. Look at the wings. They move. At the end of the day, the Sabre is not your next best purchase. But honestly, I didn't care on day one. I certainly don't care now. This ship is the underdog. It has no real place in the game and it hasn't stopped me having some of the best fun I've had in bounty hunting right here.